moving forward, uh, my disclosures are here. So to set the groundwork for this whole conversation, we have to really say what, what are the goals of androgen deprivation therapy, right? And so we agree on most of these. Some of these we won't, but we want to achieve and maintain an environment of low testosterone. We want to suppress the testosterone uh, to castrate levels as low as possible, I will argue in a minute. And we want to effectively block the receptor or potentially do both. We want a rapid onset of the suppression and we want to block a surge if we're going to use an agonist. We want to reduce testosterone to less than 20, and I'll argue as low as possible. We want consistent testosterone suppression. No escapes, no microsurges, no intermittency. We want to achieve as low a nadir testosterone as possible, but we also have to remember we have individual patients. We have to tailor this to their lifestyle. And at the end of the day, we want to consider that we're trying to increase both the quality and quantity of the patient's life. So what is the definition of castrate levels of testosterone? If you look back at older studies that use dual isotope methods of detecting levels of, of testosterone, 50 was the cutoff because that was what was the capability of technology at the time. However, going into the 90s and beyond, when we had mass spec widely available, 20 was used as the cutoff. And the question is both why are we using older technology assays around the country, and why are we using the older technology definition in our science? Dr. Crawford and Rove had an article in uh, 2010 in the New England Journal, which they compellingly argued not only are we failing to drive the, the testosterone to true castrate levels, but we're also failing to drive the testosterone as low as possible, which is where we have a, through, a true therapeutic benefit. So in retrospective review, um, you can see here there are a number of papers that have looked at castrate levels being 20. The problem is, is most of these papers are either retrospective or small numbers. Um, nevertheless, every one of them shows either improvement in survival of patients who have a testosterone less than 20, or a delay to castration resistance, or both. Dr. Klotz and his team had the PR7 trial, most of you are familiar with this, where they had a hypothesis that lower nadir levels of testosterone in the first year of ADT will correlate with a longer time to castration resistance as well as increase in uh, cause specific survival. So they looked prospectively at uh, 626 patients, and these were patients after biochemical recurrence, after radiation, who received continuous ADT. And what they found is that both endpoints were exactly as suspected. They had an increased time to castration resistance, as well as an in increase in cause specific survival in the group where the testosterone was less than 20. Very provingly demonstrated here. <clears throat> so you have to ask yourself, if, if all this evidence is so insurmountable, why are we still bantering around this level of 50? Well, the fact is, is that the government bureaucracy uses that level to define in their acceptance of medications uh, at 50, uh, both here in the United States and in the European Union. So why are we using a level dictated by the bureaucrats, which has nothing to do with science. Fortunately, some of our guidelines have, have added some sense to the debate. Uh, both the U.S. consensus in the EAU guidelines and the Canadian guidelines, all three suggest testosterone should be less than 20. Unfortunately, the NCCN is still stuck with the FDA at the level of 50, uh, and the AUA chooses to remain silent on the point. So in conclusion, back to the beginning. What is the goal of androgen deprivation to begin with? It's lower testosterone. How low should it be? As low as we can achieve. And that is the important point here. That, in addition to that, it should be maintained a little bit beyond the scope of this, this um, point counterpoint, but we want not only below 20, we want as low as possible, and we want to avoid any intermittent microsurges for complete treatment of the patient. Thank you.